What if Padme survived? During his turn to the dark side, Anakin does many horrific things, but nothing haunts him more than the accidental murder of his wife Padme. Now technically that's only what Palpatine told Anakin, he actually wasn't what killed her. Padme actually died later of a broken heart, because I guess that's something that can happen, but that's beside the point. What we're here to talk about is what would happen if Padme didn't die. This story takes us from Anakin's turn to the dark side and his duel with Obi-Wan all the way to the conclusion of the galactic civil war between the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. I can assure you, this plays out in a surprising way, so let's get right into it. Our story begins on Mustafar, where Anakin is sent in order to deal with the Separatist leadership. He slaughters them all, just like in Revenge of the Sith, and begins to regret his actions when Padme arrives on his planet. They each rush out to meet each other, glad to see each other after the chaos that had engulfed the galaxy. Then, Obi-Wan reveals himself after stowing away on Padme's ship. Once again, this goes poorly for Padme, as Anakin becomes embroiled in rage and force chokes her. Obi-Wan is disheartened, but he knows that only a Sith deals in absolutes, and he will do whatever he must to destroy them once and for all. The pair duel, and the outcome is the same. However, there is one key difference in the new timeline. Padme survives the birth of her children. How does this affect the rest of the Star Wars story? Grab your popcorn and come along with us as we explore this scenario. Because Padme survives, she cares for both of her children. She goes to Lars's homestead on the edge of the galaxy though, seeking to escape the oppressive hand of the Empire out on a small, out of the way world. One of her old handmaidens agrees to replace her in the Senate, pretending to be Padme and representing the needs of the people of Naboo alongside Representative Binks. During this time, Padme is extremely conflicted. She doesn't want to give up on Anakin, but on the other hand, she was unsure if there was any light left in him after his enraged fit. She also wants to go back to her home and continue representing them in the Senate, but she knows that the Empire will attempt to silence her for her controversial views, and she wants to take care of her children. So, she decides to stay with the Larses, raising Luke and Leia, until they grow up to be about nine years old. Then, she sends them to train with Obi-Wan, hoping that he can teach them the ways of the Force. She wants them to be more prepared in life if something ever goes horribly wrong. Unfortunately, something does go horribly wrong. On the other end of the galaxy, Vader is being used as one of Palpatine's most important tools in the construction of the Empire. He leads the eradication of the Jedi traditions across the galaxy and founds the Inquisitorius, a group of Force-sensitive beings charged with the hunting and extermination of surviving Jedi. Since Vader's loyalty to the dark side is crucial in Palpatine's plans, he lies to Vader about the fate of Padme. Palpatine senses her presence in the Force, but tells Vader that she is gone. Vader, who is so consumed by sorrow already, does not sense her and absolutely breaks down, shouting the infamous no line from Revenge of the Sith. Sidious knew that if Vader found Padme, his entire plan would be ruined. He also could sense that the double posing as Padme in the Senate wasn't actually her, and so could Vader but Vader believes that this double is crucial in maintaining the security of the Empire because the people need to think that Padme is still alive for them to control Naboo. However, as a young savvy politician as well, Palpatine knew that if the sudden disappearance of the popular Naboo senator would lead to raised eyebrows. So, he covertly tells the Inquisitors to be on the lookout for the real Padme and to execute her on sight if they found her. As a strong force user, in his meditations and dabbling in dark side magic, Palpatine begins to sense a massive force energy emanating from the Lars homestead as the Skywalker children begin to age. Knowing that whatever this could be could be a threat, he doesn't know that it's the Skywalker children, but he knows that this is a powerful force emanation. And he sends a small group of inquisitors to check out what is going on and to deal with whatever it is. The Inquisitors mobilize and begin to travel to Tatooine. Meanwhile, on Dagobah, Yoda receives a vision in his meditations regarding the impending attack. He knows that the Force is telling him to balance the needs to be maintained in the galaxy, and these children are the future of the light side. So, Yoda attempts to reach out to his old friend Obi-Wan through the Force. 
Knowing that it may be difficult because of the immense distance between the two, Obi-Wan does not receive the exact message from Yoda, but he does begin to feel an inexplicable uneasiness about the future. Believing that this may be a premonition from the Force, Obi-Wan takes the children off-world with permission from Padme so that their safety would be ensured. Lars and Beru also go into a brief period of hiding, situating themselves on one of Tatooine's moons so that they are less likely to be discovered by the Empire. Padme, knowing that this will be dangerous, sticks with Obi-Wan and the children because of her deep love for them. Yoda, after a period of deep rest, attempts to contact Obi-Wan through the Force again. He closes his eyes and enters a deep state of meditation, one far deeper than the one he had entered for a long time. He focuses all of his energy on contacting Obi-Wan and informing him that coming to Dagobah would be his best option. Yoda concentrates hard, sending out this message many times. Eventually, he collapses from exhaustion, hoping that his efforts were not in vain. Sure enough, Obi-Wan, who is also meditating with Luke and Leia, senses a faint voice from his old friend. It is only a brief whisper, but Obi-Wan knows that this is no trick. He can feel Yoda's essence in the Force reaching out to him, guiding him to Dagobah. So, Obi-Wan awakes from his meditative sleep and ends lessons with the children for the day. He goes to Padme, who is piloting the ship, and tells her to change course. They were going to Dagobah. Upon arrival, Yoda informs the children that they must train far more intensely than they had been doing before. He tells them stories of the Golden Age, of the High Republic, and of how Palpatine and the Sith organized the destruction of the Jedi Order. He paints a picture of how mad Palpatine truly is, and how he must be stopped once and for all. Yoda lays out that there will come a day when the pair would need to face Palpatine and his minions, restoring the galaxy to its former state of peace. After this, Yoda and Obi-Wan begin to train the sibling pair. Luke and Leia go into the dark side cave and face their fears in order to find their lightsaber crystals. Yoda had placed those crystals there many years ago, some that he had taken from fallen Jedi at the temple following Order 66, knowing that one day they may come in handy because more Jedi would be needed to make them follow in the ancient footsteps of the Order by going through the trials of finding their crystals. Luke and Leia make their lightsabers at the age of 16 and are very adept in the ways of the Force for their age. As the years go on, Luke and Leia both display some rogue spirit inside them. They occasionally have rebellious tendencies that could lead to fighting with their masters. Yoda would often remark, mm, from their father, that calmness, in an incredibly cryptic manner. Whenever Padme watched them train, she would laugh at these comments, but also have a demeanor of immense sadness wash over her that could be sensed by the twins. Eventually, Luke inquires about his father, wanting to know more about their family history and why he was the way he was. Padme never fully obliged, only saying that he had once been a very good man and that Luke reminded her of him. Frustrated, one night Luke decides to make a rash decision and fly away on his brother's Naboo starship to find his father, or at least more information about him. Luke had always had the feeling that whoever his father was still lived and he wanted to see if his theory was correct. By the time that the Jedi Masters learned of this, it was too late. Luke was already gone. Padme is distraught and fears for the life of her son. The Jedi assure her that they have a plan, looking at one another with somber, nostalgic glances. They would need the help of an old friend. Luke travels the galaxy looking for his father. He finds bits and pieces here and there, but he can't seem to find much. After all, Padme hadn't told him a lot about his father's identity growing up. How was he supposed to know where to even start? How did Luke even know that his father's last name had been the same as his? Luke eventually begins poking around at some rather dark corners of the galaxy, attracting the attention of Imperial law enforcement and some of the more sketchy gangs. He finds himself caught up in a messy situation, now on the run from the Empire and the Huts, while being no closer to finding any information about his father. He was growing disillusioned with his path, believing it to be best just to quit now and forget all of his family history. His mentality changed one day after sitting in a dingy bar on the Ward Mantel. As he was sitting there drinking some type of alien beverage by himself, a hooded figure sat down next to him. The man orders a drink and Luke continues to attend to his business. However, Luke is shocked when the man begins to talk to him. Luke almost spits out his drink when he hears the man say, you look almost exactly like your father, you know. 
Luke chokes momentarily before catching his breath. He asks if the man was talking to him. At this moment, the man pulls off his hood and reveals himself to be an old, battered clone soldier. He tells Luke that his name was Rex and that an old family friend heard he was getting into trouble and wanted to speak with him. Believing that whoever this friend was could lead him to his father, Luke agrees to go with the man. They begin conversing, and Rex tells Luke about his stories from the war. He talks about the valiant acts of General Anakin Skywalker and tells Luke that this was his father. Luke gasps, at first thinking that this man is insane. However, as Luke thinks more about this, it makes sense. Anakin had been powerful in the Force, just as Luke was, and the two had shared a last name. He simply supposed that a Jedi could never be his father because of the forbidden nature of attachment in their creed. Luke couldn't believe that he'd been so blind. Rex leads him into a dark room with an out-of-the-way building, and standing before him is a Togruta woman with orange skin. You're definitely a mini sky guy, eh? She says, smiling. I hear that you've gotten into a bit of trouble lately. Just like your dad, always pushing the limits. The woman reveals that her name is Ahsoka, and that she trained under Anakin during the Clone Wars. She also says that Obi-Wan and Yoda contacted her on a secure channel to request that she help find Luke and give him some answers. After months of searching, she'd finally found him. Ahsoka tells Luke many stories about Anakin and how she thought that he'd been slain in the Jedi Purge. However, she always had a nagging feeling that he was out there, somewhere, in need of help. On Dagobah, while Luke searches for his father, Leia keeps training with the Jedi Masters. She becomes incredibly adept in the Force. The Inquisitors, who are keeping a lookout for the Naboo Senator, began to sense this immense presence in the Force, similar to, like, Palpatine had on Tatooine, one that was even beginning to shine through the dark side energy that emanated from the cave on Dagobah. This caught the attention of the Ninth Sister, an opportunist among the ranks of the Inquisitors. She believed that if there were Jedi staying on Dagobah, that she was able to kill them on her own, she would earn her rightful place as the new Grand Inquisitor following the Old One's death at the hands of Kanan Jarrus. So, the Ninth Sister goes to Dagobah to investigate. When the Ninth Sister arrives, she instantly realizes that she has come to the right place. She can sense the light side far more than she could before, and eventually comes to Leia's training grounds. Cackling in anticipation, she charges into battle, ready to kill some Jedi. At first, Obi-Wan and Yoda are caught off guard. However, their advantage in numbers cancels out the Ninth Sister's element of surprise. A duel ensues, and eventually the Sister is defeated by the Jedi. Knowing that if one of the Inquisitors fails to report to Vader, the Jedi know that he will soon come looking. Soon, their presence would be known to the Dark Lord. What happened after that could be catastrophic. However, because Luke had taken the Naboo starship, the group had no way to escape from Dagobah. They began to prepare for the coming storm. Eventually, Vader and the other Inquisitors caught word of the Ninth Sister's death. They began to scour the galaxy, looking for her killer, knowing that it must have been a Jedi. The Ninth Sister was a formidable force, and not just anyone could have killed her. Vader, knowing this fact, joins the hunt himself, believing the Ninth Sister's killer to be someone worthy of his skill on the dark side. After a long conversation with Luke, and a few days spent in meditation with him, trying to get him back on the right path, Ahsoka believes that it would be a good time for them to return to his family on Dagobah. Luke agrees, happy that he has finally found the answers that he desired from Rex and Ahsoka. The trio make their way back to the Naboo ship, unaware of what has transpired on their sanctuary world. They return to Dagobah, landing in the swamp next to Yoda's hut. When they arrive, they find an incredibly ecstatic Padme. She rushes towards Luke and hugs him, sobbing with joy. Luke hugs her back, his eyes flooding with tears as well. He apologizes for his rash actions and promises that he'll never do anything like that again. Padme and Ahsoka smile at one another, both remarking how much of Anakin they saw in Luke. Obi-Wan, Yoda, and Leia were all pleased to see Luke as well, each giving him a hug and expressing their worry for him. Yoda gives Luke a brief lecture, but upon realizing that Luke had learned from his journey and gotten the closure that he required, Yoda lets it go, understanding that the young could be rebellious sometimes. Rex shakes hands with his old Jedi comrades, hugs Padme, and expresses his absolute pleasure to meet Leia. Ahsoka is pleased to see her old friends as well, recognizing that the conflict with the Empire has made them all see the galaxy in a slightly different sense. 
to when she'd last been in contact with them during the Siege of Mandalore. After they had all greeted one another, Obi-Wan and Yoda told them about what had happened with the Knight Sister. They were able to leave the planet now, so the Jedi arranged for the group to flee on the Naboo starship from the impending Sith attack. Luke, however, had a different view. He believes that fleeing is the wrong option. After hearing stories about his father during the war, he believes that they must stand for what's right, even if it requires some sacrifice. After all, that's what the Jedi were created to do, right? To stand up to the dark side? The Masters look at one another, understanding that Luke has a point. Leia nods her head, and Rex pulls out a blaster with a big smirk on his face and remarks that he hasn't had a good fight in a while. The debate is short-lived, however, as during this conversation, a dark presence could be felt settling on the planet. It seems that the Inquisitors had finally come around to visiting Dagobah. Obi-Wan and Yoda look at one another solemnly, preparing for their first battle in years. All of the Jedi sense Anakin's presence, now corrupted by the dark side, and Ahsoka feels her heart drop as the confirmation that her master had become a twisted monster and that he had needed her help. It was time for them to defend what they'd built over the years and protect the balance of the new Jedi Order. It was time for another showdown between the light and the darkness. Vader and the Inquisitors begin to make their way through the swamp. However, Vader is overcome by old feelings. He feels people in the Force that he hadn't sensed since his days as Anakin Skywalker. He senses Obi-Wan, Yoda, Padme, Ahsoka, and Rex. And he also senses the presence of his children and knows that these were his kids. These were the future. At first, he believes that this is a mere trick of the dark side cave. However, as he approaches Yoda's hut and the training grounds, Anakin begins to feel overwhelmed. He continues to try and break through the facade of Vader. When the Inquisitors finally get to Yoda's hut, they see the Jedi waiting for them. Alongside the old Jedi are Luke and Leia, holding their ignited lightsabers. Padme and Rex both hold blasters, ready to shoot if needed. Vader is overcome with complex emotions, especially when his old friends begin to plead with him. Seeing the two most important women to Anakin after the death of his mother on Tatooine begin to conflict Vader even further, especially when Padme starts to tell him of how proud she is of their children and how Ahsoka said she knows that he needs help. In a weird way, Vader was also proud in their progress in the Force. Vader believes that they would make excellent assets to the Emperor. However, Anakin sees the situation differently. As soon as he hears Padme pleading to him, sees both his old master and former clone friend standing there and feels Ahsoka's calmness yet despair in the Force, all of whom are beckoning him to come back seeing that there's still good in him it's overwhelming anakin breaks through the darkness anakin defeats vader he throws his red saber to the ground and walks toward his old family feeling the peace of the light flow through him for the first time in decades his inquisitors are baffled they scream at him wondering what's going on anakin turns on his heels to face them igniting his saber Get away from my family, he says calmly. The Inquisitors, enraged at the turn of their master, attempt to rush the Jedi with full force. However, Yoda cuts down two of them quickly in succession. Obi-Wan's mastery of Form 4 lightsaber technique allows him to easily deflect the vengeful blows of the Inquisitors, using their momentum against them and easily disarming his opponents. Luke and Leia duel one of the Inquisitors together, defeating him with their combined power in the Force. Anakin fights alongside Ahsoka, Rex, and Padme, just like their old adventures during the Clone Wars. Eventually though, Anakin has enough. He lets out a massive blow of Force energy, knocking everyone off guard, and roaring a powerful battle cry. He goes up to the remaining Inquisitors, who are still caught off guard, picks up his lightsaber, and ignites it for putting it directly to their throats. He demands that they never return and that they never come searching for him again. He warns that if they do, there will be hell to pay because nobody touches his family. 
The Inquisitors obey, fleeing with fear in their eyes. They take off from Dagobah in their Imperial shuttle, hoping that they never had to face the wrath of their former master again. As the years pass and galactic affairs continue to play out, Padme reveals her full story to the galaxy and becomes one of the crucial leaders of the Rebellion. Anakin paints his old suit white and is given back his old saber from Obi-Wan, becoming one with the light side again. All of the Jedi become more important rebel military leaders who are crucial in maintaining and expanding the Alliance influence. Ahsoka still becomes Fulcrum and Rex serves alongside Anakin. Luke and Leia, once fully trained, become beacons of hope for the galaxy as the oppressive fist of the Empire continues to clamp down and as Emperor Palpatine searches for his old apprentice and his kids. They find more Force-sensitive youth like them to be trained in the new Jedi Order being rebuilt by Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Yoda. Could things ever return to how they were under the rigid fist of Palpatine? With more Jedi and the inspiring story of Padme to bring hope to the galaxy, the Empire quickly begins to fall. Small pockets of Alliance systems soon reorganize into the New Republic. Both Death Stars are still destroyed, and Vader is not there to carry out the Emperor's will. It seems that Anakin was indeed the Chosen One, and that the galaxy was to return to a state of balance because of his actions. Eventually, Palpatine is overwhelmed and goes into hiding due to a Republic siege of Coruscant when they were trying to regain control of the Galactic Center. Moss Amida surrenders to the New Republic, and peace is again maintained in the galaxy. Palpatine couldn't possibly return with the light side now being so prevalent in the galaxy. Right?